Let's drill a hole. Here goes nothing. All of this work down to this moment. Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. We're back on the PM1 steam engine today, and this is a tale of a hole. A single hole. Join me, won't you? There's two main operations left to do. We need to spot face the back here where the cylinder mates, and we need the hole through there for the piston rod. Now the spot facing kind of depends on the hole. In fact, I think I'll probably end up building a spot facing tool that uses that hole, much like a counter bore, which is what a spot face is. It's a very shallow counter bore. So the question is, how do I drill this hole? Now the hole is located relative to the center axis of the engine, as we've talked about previously. So I need to locate it relative to these rails here, which pretty much means I can't drill it from back here, which would be the easiest way to do it. There's really no way to locate the hole back here. So I think what I'd like to try and do is drill it from this direction because I can indicate on this in either the middle or the lathe. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this yet, but I can indicate on these rails from this side and then I can come in with my drill. Now, obviously, I would need a very long drill to do that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a drill extension that's gonna give me the reach that I need to get down here. So then the question is, how? what hope do we have of staying on target there? And the, the answer is very little. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a scrap of steel here. I'm gonna make a drill bushing that's gonna sit between these rails. I'm gonna machine a precision part that's gonna fit between these machine surfaces inside and sit on these machine surfaces and we'll have the exact offset needed for the hole. So I don't even have to locate this hole on the mill or the lathe. This drill bushing is gonna do it for me. So all I will have to do is set this in here, clamp it in place, and it'll have the final hole in it and I can feed through. And so it doesn't matter if my drill extension is you know, wobbly or anything like that. This is gonna guarantee the drill goes in the right place. That's my plan so far. Uh, I'll, I'll get started on this and uh, see how it goes. I'm gonna start by squaring up this little block and I'm using a piece of copper wire here to remove the influence of the movable jaw on that unmachined surface. Tappy tap tap that in. Bring the head down close to the work for rigidity and away we go. Now the nice thing about this is the dimensions just don't matter. So all I have to do is square it up. So I'm just cleaning up every surface as I go around and not caring about landing on any particular dimension. And uh, gosh, actually that surface finish is really nice. Look at that. Yeah, you can actually read the numbers on the scale. Sometimes you just get lucky. Wasn't really trying for finish. Anyway, a little deburring and now we can put the newly machined surface against the fixed jaw as is tradition. Yeah, happy tap tap that in. That blue stuff that you see me using lately is a 50-50 mix of water and cool mist, uh, the, the mist coolant stuff. I've been looking for some sort of uh, alternative to sulfur cutting oil that doesn't smoke quite so badly because when I'm working with steel the whole shop fills with smoke and it's pretty annoying. So I was reading on uh, Practical Machinist that uh, some people use this uh, highly concentrated cool mist mix for cutting oil and they say it works uh, quite well so I'm giving it a shot and uh, I think it's too soon to say. It definitely doesn't cool as well as the cutting oil does in uh, this type of application where you're just dribbling it onto the work. The parts do get noticeably hotter, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, with the four sides squared up, I can now come back in and side mill the ends with a dramatic pan shot that was definitely not because the tripod was loose. I always get a nice finished side milling. I actually quite like it. So there's our little block looking very fine indeed. And now we can make it into what's basically a T-shape, sort of a sideways T-nut is kind of what we're making here. So get everything clean, of course. Cleanliness is next to Renzettiness in the machine shop. And we'll get our block in here and I'm gonna clamp it lengthwise, which might seem strange, but this will allow me to mill the T features along the X axis, which is good for power feeding on this mill. So now I'm using the edge finder in combination with the half function on the DRO to get a center line. This part is all going to be symmetrical on the x-axis. Sorry, I'm back. I just had to go let the cat into the closet. Oh, and now she wants me to open the curtain so she can look out the window. Hang on. Okay, where were we? Ah, yes. So I'm cutting the T features here. So what I'm doing is just creating a symmetrical narrow section in the middle there that is the exact width as the space between the crosshead guide rails on the base casting. 
And so I'm cutting right to left on the back side and left to right on the front side so that we are always conventional milling and not climb milling. It's especially important on little hobby mills like this. After a quick deburr, then we get to find out if I did my math right. And yes, perfect. Whoa, that's a fantastic fit on there. It's exactly what I wanted. That fit is the main thing that's going to locate our hole, so very important. Quick sidebar on that black mark on my thumb, because every time I show that people always ask about what kind of crazy injury I got. And I know that it looks like I lost a bar fight against a barbecue or something, but that's actually a grease stain that I always get on my thumb and it has a striated pattern on it. And the reason is because the y-axis table locks on this mill are very, very close to the x-axis lead screw, which is of course very oily. So every time I stick my hand under there to tighten or loosen those locks, I get an oily Acme thread print on my thumb. But it's okay, I'm fine. But thanks for your concern little test fit here and that's a beautiful beautiful fit so you can see how that's going to work now we need to set it up to drill the hole crosswise through it so i've got it on the edge finder here again and i'm going to find the center and then i'm edge finding from that little shoulder there because that's sitting on top of the crosshead guide bars and the hole has to be exactly 125 thou up from the top surface of those guide bars. So that's really what's setting the height of the center axis of the entire engine. So this is a very important distance right there. So here I'm at zero on the X and 125 on the Y, and we are ready to make this hole. After spotting that, I'm gonna drill this one size under 375 because I'm gonna ream it to final dimension. I want this to be a really precise fit on the drill that's gonna be making the final hole. Now you may have noticed here that my parallel suddenly got thinner and that's because I realized that my drill was gonna hit those thicker ones. So I had to undo my setup and redo it with thinner parallels. And so I got to do all that edge finding and indicating a second time. And now it's time to ream. But well, here's a common small mill problem. I don't have enough Z axis height to get the reamer in the Jacobs chuck there. So normally I would use a collet. However, this reamer shank is a little larger than a quarter. So I took a measurement of it and it's 278 thou, which I guess is supposed to be seven millimeter, though it's not exactly seven millimeters. I guess it's a metric shank on an imperial reamer because it's Asian import and well, sometimes that's what you get. I don't have a seven millimeter collet, which is normally how I get over this height problem with reamers. So instead I had to redo my setup using shorter parallels. So this marks the third time I've done all of the indicating and locating on that hole. Let's do a test fit here of the actual drill that's gonna be used in this bushing. And it should be a very close fit, which it is because that hole was reamed. So that's very encouraging. A quick little bit of deburring here. We can move on to the next step. It's looking very nice indeed. That's basically the completed customized drill bushing. Before I actually try to drill the hole with this bushing, there's a little test I can do to make sure it's gonna work. So I'm gonna install it on the base casting and I need to clamp it in place and I have just the thing for this. I made a set of Toolmakers clamps recently and they are half an inch too small because of course they are. So I gotta use an old C-clamp like a chump and with that in place, I can bring in a 375 transfer punch, and I can transfer punch with that bushing onto the casting. And this, and this isn't gonna hurt anything if it's in the wrong place, because it's such a small mark, but I can see if the bushing is gonna work the way I hope. So pull that bushing off of there. You can see the little tiny mark there. It's smaller than some of the imperfections in the casting even, it's so small. But now I can bring in a 125 gauge block, and it, this should basically split the punch mark exactly in half if everything is perfect. And actually it looks like it does. It's hard to show on camera, but it is basically splitting that punch mark right in half. So that's really hard to complain about. I'm happy with that result. On to the second challenge now, the drill extension. So I found this machined piece of scrap. I think it was an old tailstock alignment bar and it's already machined on the outside, which is really handy, but it is a barbell shape. So what I'm gonna do is just machine one of the barbell ends off. So I'll bring in the four jaw chuck so I can indicate it on the already machined surface and maintain the concentricity that this part already has in it. It's gonna save me a lot of work. This part is a little shorter than I would like, but I think it's just long enough. And by using it, I'm gonna be saving myself a lot of turning and parting off time and other subsequent operations. So I'm gonna get this dialed in here using the forage jaw.
Now I'm going to turn that end down to three quarters so it will go into the largest collet that I have that will go in my R8 mill taper. The run out in that center is an interesting story because of how this part was made. It's a barbell shape and the center and the inner part of the barbell were made in one setup but where I indicated the outer part of the barbell was made in a different setup. So what you're seeing there is basically the run out that's in my three jaw chuck. It's about five thou. It's typical of inexpensive budget three jaw chucks. Aiming for 750, and we came in at 750 and uh, 6 tenths. So that's not going to win any dimension hitting awards, but yeah, those awards are all political anyway. It's close enough to go in an R8 collet. Now we need to turn our attention to that center. That runout is actually going to be a problem because I need to drill a hole to hold the drill bit. The runout in that center is going to prevent us from being able to drill a concentric hole. Here's a technique for recutting a center. You orient the center drill so that the cutting flutes are one facing down, one facing up, and you put a little bit of lateral preload on the quill with the tool post and go in with the center drill again, and that forces only the backside of the center drill to do any cutting, and that prevents the existing center's run out from it affecting the center drill. So now you can see we've got a new center that's slightly larger and perfectly concentric. Time to drill the hole that's going to hold the actual drill now. And I'm drilling from this end, but this is actually the end that's going to go in the mill. What I'm doing is I'm drilling all the way through because it's going to save me a setup and having a through hole isn't going to hurt anything for the function of the device, even though only the bottom end of the hole is actually going to be used for holding the drill. Unfortunately, my drill wasn't quite long enough to get all the way through, but I think I got enough length. So I'll cut it off where the drill did get to. But before I part it off, I mocked it up with the drill on that line, and we'll just see if it's going to reach, and it looks like it will, so I went ahead and parted it off, and now I can install the drill, and I'm once again going to temporarily fix it in place and do a mock up here to make sure this is going to work. And it is not. I neglected to account for the clearance of the top of the quill there on the casting. So I need to make this entire thing again because it's just too short. In my effort to save myself 20 minutes, I cost myself 45. I think we all have done that at some point. Okay, more sensible setup. I got a longer piece of stock. I turned down the OD to three quarters, and now I'm setting up the steady rest to finish the end. A little bit of oil in there, yada yada, and I'm gonna chamfer the end, because I don't know, I love chamfers. I'm jumping the gun there a little bit. And now I'm gonna drill just deep enough to hold the drill here from this end. I've got the line mark there on the drill for my depth. It's not really important, just deep enough. And I'll chamfer that inside edge as well. And now we're ready to part it off. And this is the part that we should have made all along. You know, I think it's really easy to get trapped in a cycle of small bad decisions one after another. And you keep thinking, oh, I can still save this. I can, I'm still saving time. I can rescue this. It takes a certain mental strength to step outside of that cycle and realize that you have to start over and you should have done something different from the beginning. So I think we all fall into that sometimes. And Yahtzee. Over to the mill now, I've got a 3 quarter 5C collet in a collet block. And note that the stock can go through a 5C collet. If you're new to machining and you're wondering what the difference is between work holding and tool holding collets, that's the primary one. Work holding collets allow stock to go through them. Now I need to cross drill this right in the center and I could edge fine and do the half function on the yada yada yada. Or here's a great old timers trick where precision is not super, super critical. Just put a scale on there, pin it down there with the drill and just wiggle it back and forth until the scale is perfectly horizontal. And then that's pretty close to being in the center within a few thou if done carefully. I'll try my blue goo here again, which did exactly nothing on that round surface. And I'm very slowly pecking on the top to make sure that I get the drill started without it wandering off. And with that, we can come in with the tapping size for 832, which is what I'm using for my little set screws here that are gonna hold the drill in place. I'm just drilling straight through because I'm gonna have two set screws in there. Tappy tap tap. Luckily my taper tap is long enough that I can go straight through both holes in one shot. To deburr those after drilling and tapping, I'm just going in with a 375 reamer by hand and just twisting it in there and that's enough to knock the burrs out of there. A little test fit with the drill and that is looking really good. So let's see the set screws now. Now these are obviously quite a bit too long. So I'm not getting a whole lot of thread engagement because they also have a dog point on the end of them. So I'll need to modify those. A little test run here. And the drill extension looks really nice. There's no run out there. The drill has some run out in it just because drills always do. But that looks like it's going to work. So let's see if it'll actually clear the casting. And it looks like it will. We've got plenty of room except for the set screws, which are definitely going to be in the way. So 
We need to shorten those regardless, which I do by threading them into a piece of scrap, put a jam nut on the back, and grind them flush. Now they're shorter. I'm going to take a shot at doing my setup now with the casting. So I've got my angle plate squished in there next to the vise so I don't have to move the vise. And indicating that guy in. We've got that running parallel. So the casting is going to slip in like that. And I should be able to just bolt it to the angle plate. And poop knuckles. Yeah, there is not enough clearance there because the angle plate is sticking out too far in the back and I don't have enough wide depth here. So I'm gonna have to rotate the angle plate 90 degrees to get room and that's gonna mean moving the vise. Hey Quinn, why are you suddenly milling brass for no reason? Well, uh, I'm also gonna need a way to fixture this guy on that plate so I thought I would grab a piece of scrap and make a little clamp and I thought brass would be a nice choice because it won't mar up the casting and it's easy and quick to make this little part. I just milled it basically square-ish and I'm drilling and tapping some holes Deeper, deeper, deeper. And then I mill a channel down the middle that's gonna fit over that web in the center of the casting. Here's a mock-up of what I'm thinking. So that little clamp there is gonna go over that little web and I'll be able to clamp it down to the angle block. And then the drill extension should go in here. And yeah, that's not gonna work. There is not enough clearance there around that drill extender. It was a beautiful idea, but it won't be appreciated in this lifetime. Instead, I came up with a much simpler fixture that looks like this. Now, the drill is gonna work here now because we have clearance, so I wanna test out that drill bushing though and make sure it's gonna work. So I rigged up an old L-shaped piece of scrap hot rolled steel here, and I'm just seeing if the drill bushing is gonna succeed in drilling on target. So I'll take my clamps off of there and let's see if it made a nice hole and it did there appears to be no damage to the drill bushing from doing that which is good it's part of why i made it out of steel so it would survive at least a couple of holes and you see how the drill actually shifts to the side slightly as it's reinserted in the hole that means the bushing worked because that means it forced the hole to be where i wanted it to be and not where the drill might have naturally put it due to run out or other error Okay, let's finally set up to drill this thing. So I've got a couple of clamps in there and some brass to protect the casting as needed. And I'm just gonna tap this guy in nice and vertical using the sides of the crosshead slides as my reference. That actually is indicating on zero, but there's enough play in the gibs on the column on this mill that until it's locked, you get enough vibration from cranking it up and down that you can see on the needle there. But if you just stop moving at the top and bottom, you can see what the actual reading is. Now I'm edge finding to get the center between the two milled bearing caps there, which is the center line of the engine. And I'm using an old aluminum wedge to support the underside of the casting there, which is floating in space. You might recognize that as a cat toothbrush fixture if you're a longtime viewer. Hold on to your butts, and let's drill a hole. Here goes nothing. All of this work, down to this moment. Those are some good looking cast iron chips. I think we drilled a hole. Let's see if it worked. New in the Blondie Hack store, stainless steel insulated beverage tooling. Extremely repeatable, compatible with metric and imperial beverages. Also good for storing cutting oil. You can see how close this was. The quill is just a hair above that casting there. And I did actually graze the end of the crosshead slide there a little bit. There was too many different things to watch and I went a little deeper than I needed to and grazed the casting there, but a little personality there is all. Here's our first look at the actual hole we spent all this effort making and it looks really good. Tear down my fixture here and deburr the outside the usual way. And for the inside, I'm using this little trick collapsible inside deburring tool, which I've shown before. There's a link to that below. And there is the final product. That is a hole through the end of our casting on the exact center line of the engine, at least I hope. That was a lot of work, but it was a very, very important hole. And it was really important to take the time to get that right. It's gonna dictate a lot about how well this engine runs. Hope you enjoyed watching that yak shaving process. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.